Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to Black Ops Cold War In-Depth. In today's episode, we're reviewing the M16 DMR AR SMG Shotgun Sniper Rifle Hybrid God Gun. If you can't tell by that title, I think the M16 and its little brother, the AUG, are two of the best weapons in Black Ops Cold War. The M16 is extremely strong, so I've got a lot of good things to say about it today. As a matter of fact, they are so strong, I think that they perform well in every single role. I think that they function well as an SMG, they function well as a rifle, and you can kind of snipe with it. But we can get into that later in today's episode. I believe that both the AUG and the M16 will be in need of a nerf sometime soon. If it were up to me, I would probably lower the burst speed a little bit or maybe add some more recoil but that's kind of not up to me that's up to Treyarch if they choose to nerf it at all so let's jump into the stats and I'll talk about why this weapon is so strong the m16 bullet velocity is 725 meters per second which is very fast for this game or it's actually normal for a call of duty game it's going to perform like a normal cod gun but a lot of the guns in black ops cold war have very low bullet velocity so this one's going to feel like a godsend you're not going to need any kind of bullet velocity boost barrel and it won't be helpful unless you're playing dirty bomb or maybe warzone when that comes out so your base weapon has great bullet velocity and it's going to hit normally so you're not wasting an attachment on that speaking of hitting it hits like a dump truck let's talk about the damage it'll kill between three or four shots or i should say there's no between it's either three or four shots and it has a damage profile of 50 to 40. that's 50 up close and decreasing down to 40 at long range which is still quite a lot of damage and headshots will grant you one less Best shot to kill at long ranges so even if you are in that four shot kill range if you get a burst and get a couple of headshots in there well that's gonna one burst so your time to kill range just extended so headshots are important maybe not so much up close the maximum damage range on this weapon is 21.5 meters and we've been doing a lot of submachine guns here so that's probably gonna seem awesome in comparison but it's not very far compared to a lot of the assault rifles a lot of the basic assault rifles in black ops cold war have much longer ranges however However, given the fact that most of the maps you're playing are close quarters combat, that's still relatively close quarters combat in the game right now. So it's still long range in Black Ops Cold War, but don't get to thinking that it's crazy. In my opinion, I think the M16 is kind of a two burst or quit kind of weapon. You really should be trying to one burst people. That's what I try to do. I try to line up for headshots at long range or just make sure I don't miss any shots of my burst up close and delete them. But if all else fails, two bursts usually gets the trick done. If you're needing three or four bursts to kill, you either have a bad internet connection or you just need to practice your aim a little bit which there's a little trick to aiming this one and we'll talk about that later the m16's rate of fire of the burst of the three rounds that come out are 900 rounds per minute which is very fast in this game it'll feel like burt it'll feel like instant it's really really quick the burst delay is about 235 milliseconds and oddly the burst delay feels faster than it is it doesn't feel so bad that's kind of a long burst delay for a lot of cod games but i think it's the speed of the burst and its ability to delete people doesn't make it seem so bad some of the barrels will boost the rate of fire there's a couple of different barrels there's one of the very first one is the rapid fire and then i think there's one called the titanium that'll boost them 14 and 25 percent respectively what this does is it boosts the rate of fire of the burst but does not reduce the burst delay so you're still stuck with that 235 milliseconds burst delay no matter what you do but the rate of fire of your burst can actually get pretty fast for the 25 percent barrel that's going to put the weapon somewhere just shy of the 1200 rpm range Range, which is just ludicrous it's not even able to calculate frames properly at that rate of fire and these barrels are funny they are very lethal in a lot of ways but i don't really need to boost my time to kill to be any faster than it already is i don't think that they're the most efficient attachments because the m16 already has extremely fast time to kill the one burst ttk is 132 milliseconds which is just deleting people it's gonna only a couple of frames there and if you need two bursts to kill well that's a fair bit slower and your two bursts to kill range is 433 milliseconds which is kind of on par with some of the slower to average kind of killing weapons but what you really need to take home is that the m16 is the fastest killing weapon in the entire game that is not a one-shot kill if you are within that one burst range this will kill you faster than anything except a shotgun or a quick scoper or maybe a knife but given the fact that the stabbing speeds are a little slow maybe faster than the knife i don't know this weapon shreds it is an extremely fast killing weapon in general not just for tactical rifles but compared to assault rifles some machine guns pistols lmgs whatever you want to name it 
and not just for Black Ops Cold War, but for any COD game in general. I feel that you could put this weapon in any COD game and it would perform very, very well. It's that good of a weapon. The M16 is extremely lethal and should be respected at all times. If you're going to challenge an M16 user, you need to be very serious about how you do it. When it comes to handling stats, like most of the tactical rifles, it's a little bit slower. It'll aim down sights in 350 milliseconds, which is going to be a lot slower than SMGs, and a little bit slower than most of the assault rifles, yet still snappier than the LMGs. Sprint out time is going to be 250 milliseconds, which is kind of the overall standard for this game for anything except the super heavy weapon, so you won't notice anything special there. The M16 does have a slower than average reload time of 2.7 seconds. It's not tremendously slow, it's not crazy slow, but a little bit slower than average. It also also has a wider than average hip fire too. It's pretty much in line with the rest of the tactical rifles. The assault rifle hip fire, which is the most common one in the game, is 7.5 milliradians. The SMGs are going to be mostly 7 milliradians. And the M16, however, is 8.5 milliradians. So the M16's hip fire isn't quite as good. Well, not definitely not as good as it used to be. I think that's one of the things that it got nerfed on. It probably could be used to nerf a little bit more because it is just a shotgun up close. So there's that. Anyway, base recoil is very low. It does not have a whole lot of vertical kick. And I will admit that the burst does wobble a little bit. It does shake side to side, and sometimes you'll miss shots at long range, but it's overall a very tight cluster. There are burst weapons in Call of Duty games and shooters in general that perform far worse than this. I would say that even given the burst wobbling, it's going to still be low recoil and easy to use, depending on what system you're on. Now, I'm going to have to put on my PC Master Race hat for this one. Console Aim Assist makes this weapon very easy and very forgiving. The aim assist in Black Ops Cold War on PlayStation and Xbox is very, very strong. So if you're trying to track people on those consoles, it's very easy to track them through a burst because your crosshairs will kind of stick to them and follow them wherever they're going. However, PC hitboxes are very weird and there's a lack of auto aim and aim assist that can make this somewhat awkward because the weapon shoots very fast. You're kind of expected to manually track people through the burst with your mouse. And as a relatively new PC gamer, this isn't a skill that I had fully mastered or figured out. I had to spend some time practicing to get used to the micro adjustments needed for burst tracking. But once I did, it was very, very, very effective on PC. And I think that it's going to be a lot easier on console, though you may have to put a little bit of practice into it. It's a little bit awkward because it shoots so fast, you want to think about it as all the bullets coming out at once like a DMR, but it's not really. You're going to have to do a little bit of tracking, but it's not the hardest thing to master. Definitely not. I'm going to take a second to put in a little bit of personal opinion in this part of the in-depth episode, and that's that I feel that there's something really weird about hit detection on PC. My experience with the PC version of the game has been that hit detection just isn't uh, isn't up to Call of Duty standards. There's a lot of very unusual situations, a lot of ghost bullets, a lot of super bullets, uh, a lot of things, uh, shots that I feel that I should have hit even when I go back and look at them in slow motion. And there's a bunch of posts about this on Reddit. I don't know why it's worse on PC than console, but it definitely is worse on PC. Moving along, the iron sights are good enough for small maps. You know, I usually struggle with M16 iron sights. I usually call them clunky, big, ugly, hard to use, but for most of the maps in this game, which are mostly small, they're good enough. I would struggle to hit targets with them at a distance. I couldn't shoot all the way across the dunes or across the boats or anything if I didn't have optics, but for most of the maps, the iron sights will get the job done. And I think that the M16 is scary enough because it has the fastest time to kill in the entire game. That's just a great attribute to have right there. If, if you are a weapon in Call of Duty and your specialty is just having the fastest time to kill, well, that already makes you a popular and irreplaceable weapon. But almost all of the other attributes are either good or perhaps at the lowest normal. There's not really a downside to using the M16 and just a whole ton of upsides. Because of this, I feel that you can effectively use the M16 as a primary assault rifle. It kills just as quick and just as easily as most ARs, if not better. It is an SMG rusher deleter. When people rush me with SMGs, I can just kind of burst fire them down and kill them faster than they can kill me with SMGs. Even when they surprise me and I have to hip fire, it can be a hip fire shotgun if you're running a steady aim laser on it and just delete people like that. You can use this weapon to counter snipe like a true DMR, how it's supposed to be. You can kind of harass and punish snipers. Or if you feel like it, it's got the range and bullet velocity where you can basically snipe with it. It's really not that hard to hit people at super long distances. I think that the weapon is too strong, and I think that there are very few weaknesses to the M16 other than it's a burst rifle, and that's pretty much it. 
the weapon is definitely overpowered and in need of some tuning. Now, I'm not Treyarch. I can't demand this. I can't make this happen. I can't. Uh, this is just my personal opinion. And it wouldn't surprise me if when the Warzone patch or a couple of patches from now, something happens to this gun to make it weaker. If it were up to me, I'd probably slow down the rate of fire of the burst, or I would give it a little bit more recoil, make it a little bit more difficult to use at long ranges, or something to kind of rein it back. It's a little bit too beefcake right now. And at the end of this in-depth episode, I have two classes to recommend to you. I have a rushing class, and then I have a long range class. So let's take a look at the rushing class first. It's a very basic class. You're going to want to use the very first muzzle the muzzle brake attachment it doesn't need a whole lot of vertical recoil reduction and i've had very bad results with suppressors in this game so i'm not using them very much that's my way to go then you're going to want to run the swat 5 milliwatt laser which gives you plus 40 percent hip fire accuracy which is insane that really can make it a hip fire shotgun when you need it to be I run the 45 round mags because I don't really need the ADS downtime downsides of the other ones. And there's very little downside to the 45 round mag. Speed tape is pretty much the same, just a little boost to my ADS time. And then finally, the wire stock, which gives me a faster sprint out time with no other weird downsides. And what you've created is effectively a pure bonus M16 that has really tight hip fire and is good for deleting people up close. And it's good enough for medium ranges. Long ranges, you're probably gonna struggle with the iron sights and maybe the recoil. But for most of the smaller maps in this game, it should shred people. If you're gonna be playing Fireteam Dirty Bomb, Warzone, Combined Arms, or just trying to take over the dunes on satellite and any kind of big map, we're gonna show you a long range class too. The long range class starts out with a SUSAT multi-zoom sight. This one takes a long time to unlock, but it is absolutely the best optic on this weapon. It gives you big, crisp, beautiful, clear crosshairs, and you can toggle between 2 and 4x zoom as needed. 2 is barely more than a red dot sight, and 4 is basically an ACOG, so you can do whatever you want with it. I loved it. I'm still running the basic muzzle brake. I will admit that the agency suppressor gives me more vertical recoil reduction and only a minor penalty to my range, but again, my subjective experience is really negative with silencers in this game, so I've been avoiding them. I use the 20.5 inch match grade barrel to give myself 100% effective damage range. If the M16 had a weakness, if it had a downside, it's that the effective range isn't crazy long, but I just doubled it and put it on par with assault rifles. So now it's very, very good and it has a lot more one burst range. For the body attachments, I'm gonna lean on the steady aim laser. This is a weapon where it definitely does make sense to use one of the flashlights or maybe even the ember sighting point but I don't really want their downsides and what I really want is to tighten up my hip fire so that when people rush me I'm a little bit more competitive. The rifles already have really good reveal range so unless I'm playing on cartel I don't need that. I guess I might need it to see through bushes but otherwise it's fine. For the underbarrel attachment, the next to last field agent grip is the way you want to go. It gives you 10% vertical recoil reduction, which is quite nice, and a colossal, outstanding, ridiculous, I can't believe they even programmed it this way, 40% horizontal recoil control. This, more than anything, will tighten up your burst and make it very godly. And the only downside is you can't move very fast when you're shooting, which I wasn't doing anyway because it's a tactical rifle. Very, this is probably the most important attachment on the kit other than the sight. Still running the basic 40 45 round mag. I don't want any ADS penalties on this weapon or hip fire or anything like that. So 45 is plenty, plenty good for me. I run the serpent wrap here to give myself faster ADS time and faster sprint to fire time. I'm aware that the airborne elastic wrap will give me a faster ADS time, flinch resistance, and a couple of other nice things, but it hurts my sprint out time a little bit too much and it makes the shooting moving speed a little bit too ridiculously slow. That's something I can usually ignore, but when I start stacking too many negatives, it does get annoying, so I'm keeping it really simple for this one. And also very simple for the stock. Tactical stock will give me 65% aim walking movement speed, which is very useful if you're aiming down sights and corner peeking, sliding around dunes, or just kind of, you know, moving around and aiming with the left stick a little bit. You kind of just slide around. It makes it very comfortable, very good feeling. You're not stuck in place. And I think that is an excellent choice. So we've got the close range class, the long range class, and it doesn't really matter because the gun's so strong, it'll work really well almost anywhere. Guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode of In-Depth. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out.